Yeah, so the first half of your question was um, about the termination itself. And uh, you can see, firstly, as just as a comment, how how um, reincarnation can cause you to do something that you may otherwise not do if you knew the truth, um, and particularly the truth of the laws of free will. So let's say, yes, so let's say that's what happened, I had a termination. The termination, you are right in your case, was all about you feel children generally are unwanted, um, you feel unwanted, and of course that sets up a cycle inside of yourself that therefore when you about you know when you're pregnant, you then feel like, is this child going to love this world? No, this child's going to be you know we have a lot of things go on inside of us, starting to actually justify terminating the child. Now, in terms of what happens with the law of compensation with it, is here's your soul, so here's your half of your soul. By the way, we've also got to consider the male half of the soul as well in this process. Bear in mind, you notice that I'm always referring to the fact that there's equal culpability here if the decision was mutual. If the decision wasn't mutual, if like the man wanted to keep the baby and you didn't want to, then obviously it's a far less mutual decision. Does that make sense? But if the decision is mutual, then obviously there's an equal law of compensation applied to the, the, the male part who's created this child. So remember, so there's the male and the female as a soul perspective, as God sees you. Here's the little baby, let's say it's a female child, as God sees it. Now, what happens is that determination of this one's free will creates a penalty inside of those parents. Now, that penalty will need to be experienced. It can only be experienced in one of two ways. One way is that every time you will, you will at some point in your life have to think completely about what you've done and come to terms completely about how much it affected this person's life and how much it even affected the life of its soulmate as well. You will actually go through these feelings inside of yourself. Now those feelings are the result of the difference between you breaking the law and the natural love law that was already inside of your soul and you feel the difference between those two states. So what happens then is that you go through this process of what you would call compensation. In other words, now this is assuming you're not involved in God in the process, right? This is assuming this is just you and you're understanding the truth. You go through a process of compensation and what that means is you feel guilt, you feel shame, you cry, you feel terrible inside of yourself for what you've done. Just like you would as if you had murdered the person and came to acknowledgement that you'd done that. Does that make sense? Now, if you involve God in the process, if you allow these tears and, and, and direct them towards God and have a feeling of repentance and focus on what caused you to make the decision to abort the child, and both the husband and the wife, or you know, the male and the female, need to do this, what you will do then is you'll develop the relationship with God further and God's love can come and take away the cause that's inside of your soul and then you don't have to experience the compensation. And then some people would say, uh, but if I do that then I can have another abortion and if I do that again then it's all you know, fine. But of course it doesn't work that way. Right? Because obviously every sincere act God knows inside of you, and every insincere act, God also knows. And there are different laws that, are, that, are, that judge each act, if you like. So when I say judge the act, there are different compensation effects or penalties upon the soul as a result of the laws that you break. And the choices that you made to break them. So if you presume on God's mercy, you will find that your presumption will not be rewarded. You understand what I mean by that? Imagine for a moment that, and there's an illustration, there's many illustrations that I gave in the first century about presumption of mercy. One of them I asked you to read today for the section on mercy. If you read it, the one that I sent out, did, did everyone get to read that? Yes. Who hates the Bible? Right. Yeah. In, there, in that one I sent out, there was this uh, illustration of a man who had a debt, a huge debt. In fact, it was 
billions and billions of dollars to his owner, his, who, who he was a slave. And he owed this debt to the slave, and, he, and, and the owner was going to put the slave and all of his family in jail right, as a result. Now, he went and pleaded repentance to the owner, to the landholder, and the owner decided to absolve him because of the plea of repentance, the effect of the owner's heart. The owner decided to absolve him of all of the debt. But then that same man who had a debt had a man who owed him money. And instead of absolving that person of his debt, you know what he did? He went and went to strangle him when he couldn't pay the money. Now, what had that man not learned? He had not learned the lesson of mercy, had he? He hadn't learned a lesson of love. And that is that we can't fake repentance. And you can't fake repentance with God. So when it comes to this issue of the law of compensation with regard to anything we have done, not just the abortion of a child, but anything that we have done, we cannot fake repentance with God. It has to be real and felt inside of yourself. And that's what appeals to God's heart. And in the the appealing it to God's heart automatically draws the, forgive, uh, the, the process of mercy from God, which actually is divine love entering you and helping remove from you the reason why you did the act you did. So if you are truly repentant or truly sorry for the act, you would want to actually work through the reason why you did it. Now, this is, of course applies to all sorts of things, including relationships, right, with people, doesn't it? Let's say you're in a husband and wife relationship, right, and the man goes out and cheats on the wife. How do you stay together after that? There's a lot of broken trust, there's a lot of broken feelings, there's a lot of, you know, the love is, has really been harmed a lot between the two of you, perhaps. What you would need to do is actually the man would need to go through a process of repentance, wouldn't he, at some point? Of being sorry for what he's done. Now, it's one thing just to say sorry, but quite a lot a lot different to work on the reason why you did it in the first place. Because, you see, if the man doesn't work on the reason why he did it in the first place, what's highly likely? Do it again. He'll just do it again. And so can you see why God is always trying to focus you on the reasons or the causes within you as to why you do things, rather than the effects? So rather than trying here to do things right, God wants it to be motivated as a desire from here to do things right. So most religious practices on earth today get you here, don't they? Right? So they make you feel guilty about doing something wrong. So let's say you, you were a Christian at some point and you went along to church, and many of you probably still do, right? And many times you'll hear, you know, if you do this, you will be punished. <coughs> and so what happens inside of here is we have this thought, I can't do that, I can't do that, I can't do that. And then when we meet someone we're attracted to, we're with a partner and we meet someone else we're attracted to, the thought ticks in, I can't do that. And so we walk away, right? But the feeling still is, I'm attracted to them. I'm attracted to them, right? And I need to deal with what God feels, is you need to deal with the emotion in that. Why are you attracted to them? Work out what's going on. Does that make sense? That's, what, that's why I always refer to the heart as being the seat of motivation, not your head. So it's the soul that needs to change. So in this aspect, with regard to abortion, it's exactly the same. It's the soul that needs to change. So therefore, it's an emotion that needs to be experienced, that needs to be released, so that you don't have the feeling of doing that again, and that you can't agree with it, anybody doing that again. Does that make sense? Yeah.